All right, 6.3, solving exponential functions. All right, so last lesson, we were just pretty much talking just in general what exponential functions were, right? So in this one, we're, we're doing it algebraically. We're doing it by uh, pen and paper, and, uh, but then we're also gonna be able to solve these things with, with a calculator too. So just to talk a little bit about what the difference between like an expression and an equation is, or what, what we mean by solving. Um, in this case, there's the equal sign, right? So that, that's what we're introducing. So like in this expression, two to the power of five is equal to two to the power of X plus three. There's actually an answer for that, right? Like there's gonna be some answer for X that's gonna make that thing true. Now, what would that be? Like maybe you can kind of figure that out from looking at this. In order for like the left side of this equation to be the same as the right side of the equation, well, really, like if this is five, then that would have to make, like this would also have to be to five, right? So if that was true, like if this, whatever X plus three is, is equal to five, then that would make this, this statement true. And that's really the tactic we're gonna use to solve when X or a variable is up in the exponent, right? So maybe you can just see from looking at this, that have to be two, right? But what you would do at this point is you'd write it, that would make an algebraic expression. You'd say five must be equal to x plus three and then you can subtract three from both sides and we'd have two right so x is equal to two okay so that's the main idea so we can uh um yeah so we can we can start to solve these things now so let's do this one so again we've got the same base right they're both three so we can do our little trick here so i can just go go ahead and say Okay, three to the power of five is equal to that, and three to the power of two x minus seven. Then I can just say five must be equal to two x. Oh, it's not an x, that's an eight. Two x minus seven. Okay, and then from here, it's simple algebra, right? So we can say, okay, well, I'm gonna add seven to both sides. So plus seven, plus seven. So we get 12 is equal to two x and then divide by two, divide by two, so we get six. All right, so there you go. So now it says verify your uh, solution with your calculator. So what that just means is you could actually like put this in, you could actually like write it as, you know, three to the power of five gives you a really big number, and then you could put in three to the power of two times, now the answer was six, right? So I could throw a six in there, and it should give me the same answer. But I'm, I'm not gonna go to the time to do that in the video, but that would be the case, right? You could just punch it in right like that. All right, now, it's not always that easy. So in this case, we don't have the same base anymore, right? So there's 16 on that side. There's not even an exponent on the left side there, right? So what we're after here is we want to rewrite these expressions, or these equations, in a different way so that they do have the same base, right? So what I can do here is I could rewrite this 16 as, well, hopefully two to the power of something, right? So this is where there's a little bit of like trial and error, a little bit of like guessing going on. I could be like, well, maybe two to the power of three, right? Then like, okay, well, no, that's two times two times two. That's, that's eight, right? So it's probably two to the power of four. So then you try it out though, right? Make sure you, you actually like try that in your calculator if you can't figure it out in your head. That two to the power of four is 16. Okay, so... That's all I did at this first step is I've just rewritten 16 as two to the power of four. And then I'm gonna say that's equal to, and then two to the power of three X minus two. Okay, so good to go, right? We got the same bases. Now I can actually just make my exponents equal. So that's gonna be four is equal to three X minus two. And then we're back to simple algebra. So I'll add two add two, so we get six is equal to three X, and then divide by three, divide by three. So we're out of the room, but you would have um, two is equal to X, or X is equal to two. Okay, so let's do that again. Same strategy. So I'm gonna say, okay, I like, I would sure like this to be three to the power of something to get to, 20, to, get to 27. So I know three to the power of two is nine, so it's gotta be three to the power of three. And that's equal to three to the power of four X plus five. 
So good to go. I got my base is the same. So then I can say three is equal to four X plus five. Subtract five from both sides. So minus five, minus five. So we've got negative two is equal to four X. And then divide by four, divide by four. So that, again, I run out of the room, but I'll simplify to negative one half is equal to X. All right, good. Next one. Okay, so now, now it's not, it's a, it's a little bit more difficult now, right? Because now I'm looking at this and I've got 32 and I got 64. I can't just go like, you know, 32 to the power of something here, right? Like what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna want some number that, that I can make for my base for both these things, right? And again, there's a little bit of trial and error here. Like maybe you, you might think three, right? But then you're like, okay, you know, three, three to the power, of, like I can't go to the power of three or anything to get that, right? That's not gonna work out. But what about two? Two is quite often a nice one, right? So two to the power of something is 32 is what I'm kind of guessing at here, right? So let's try it out. Two to the power of, two to the power of like four. So if you go two to the power of four, in your calculator, you'd probably get, you get 16, right? Well, that's not right. And I can see, okay, well, if I go times two again, I get 32. So it's probably two to the power of five, right? So all I've done so far is I've just rewritten that 32 as two to the power of five. And then this X plus one, well, that's still up there, right? But I have to keep it written in brackets. So this is like a, like a one place where, where you, you're likely to make a mistake or you might make a mistake here is that you might, you might have written it out like this. You might have written it out as two to the power of five X plus one. That's gonna screw things up because this five is actually a, being applied to both of these things in the brackets, okay? So just careful when you actually write out the X plus one or whatever it is up there, it's gotta go in brackets, okay? I'll leave it like that for now, but when we actually do the algebra here in the, in the step below, then we'll expand it. Okay, now 64. Well, two to the power of five got me to 32. If I go times two again, right? So two to the power of six is 64. And then there's also just an X up there. Doesn't matter about brackets because there's only one term. All right, so now we're good. Got the same bases, right? They're both base two. So now we can just make the exponents equal to each other. So we can say five and then in brackets, X plus one is equal to six X. Like I was saying before, now we got to expand this, right? So the five will be expanded into both. So we get five X plus five is equal to six X. Okay. Now I'm just going to bring this five X over to the other side. So we'll subtract five X, subtract five X. So we get five is equal to, and then six minus five is just one. So just X and that's it. I don't have to do anymore. All right. Okay, moving on. Just lots of practice. Okay, now, what the heck do we got going on here? So we've got 11 to the power of, that should be a T, I think is what it's supposed to be. Let's call it an X. Let's put an X there. So 11 to the power of X, okay? Now I got like a, a weird fraction going on over here. Well, I'll show you how we can handle this. So. I'm gonna rewrite this again. So let's say, so this is 11 to the power of X and I'm gonna rewrite this guy a different way. What I'm kind of supposing here, what I'm trying to get, what I'd like to have, is I wanna rewrite this, right? 1,331 as like 11 to the power of something. That'd be nice, right? And I'm not sure what it would be, right? So try some things out. Go like 11 to the power of, it's not gonna be two, right? Because 11 to the power of two is 121. So try like 11 to the power of three. And that, sure enough, that's it, right? So, so what we can do here is I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this out as one over, and then this is this, this bottom number, that's the same thing as 11 to the power of three. Now that's kind of what we wanted, but it's not quite there. I'm gonna do one more little move here. Let's, let's write it out. So it's 11 to the power of X is equal to and then this part here requires that we kind of remember how to deal with negative exponents. So I'm gonna rewrite this guy as 11 
to the power of negative three. Do you remember how negative exponent, what that does, right? So here, let's, if I'm starting with that one, if I had 11 to the power of negative three, the negative on an exponent, that flips, that takes the reciprocal of these guys. So this was like 11 over one, right? And then the negative would flip that upside down. So that would really be like one over um, 11 to the power of three. Or it could have been written like this too, right? To the power of three, it doesn't really matter. They'd be the same in the end. Um, but either way, it flips that thing upside down, right? So we kind of went the other direction on this where we started off with it flipped upside down and then we just called that a negative exponent. Hopefully that one makes sense, right? So that, that, that can be a little tricky there. So then in the end there though, now my exponents are equal to each other. So I can say, okay, well, X must be equal to negative three and that's it. I didn't have to do any algebra there. Okay. So let's, let's try that again. We have another one of those here. Okay. So we got one over 32 to the power of yada yada. So again, I'm focusing in on these numbers and I'll tell you right now, this one with where it's flipped upside down there, all I got to do is whatever I figure out 32 is, I just got to turn that into a negative exponent, right? That, that's what the process will be there. Okay. So I did one like this. So I'm kind of already prepared for it. 32, that's going to be a base two one, right? So I'm going to rewrite this as one over, um, oh, sorry, two to the power of, and then that was five, right? From, from above. Here, let me double check. That was five. Yeah, that was five. Yeah. <laughs> two to the power of five. Okay. So, and then that was all to the power of X plus two. And then 128. All right. So just double check. Pretty sure that's going to be two to the power of seven, but just double check, right? So that it is, in fact, we can rewrite 128 as two to the power of seven, and then there's still an X up there. So I'll just leave the X up there with it. Okay, so we're almost there. Now I'm just going to rewrite this guy, right? Because we just learned that above. That is just the same thing as two to the power of negative five. And then we can't forget when we put this up there with it, brackets, right? That's in brackets with it. So it's got to be bracket X plus two is equal to, and then seven X or two to the power of seven X, seven X. Okay. Well, now, now we're almost there, right? So now I can make my exponents equal to each other. So I'm going to say negative five times X plus two must be equal to seven X. All right, so again, I gotta get rid of these brackets, so I'm gonna expand that into there. So we've got negative five X minus 10 is equal to seven X. All right, so I will, I will add five X to both sides. So plus five X plus five X. So we've got negative 10. So is equal to 12x. Okay, and then very last thing, divide by 12. Divide by 12. Okay, so they both, you can divide them both by two, right? So we get negative five over six would be my answer there. All right, so I think you guys get the idea. The, the, the next one's gonna be similar. You'd be rewriting this next one with a power of five instead. I'll skip that one because it is so similar and we've done two of them now. So let's, let's move on now to another way to solve these and actually an easier way to solve these really. So another way to solve these is to graph them, right? So we've done stuff like this before in like our quadratics unit. So if we had something like this where we had a graph and we wanted to figure out where like a line crossed it, right? That'd be, it'd be where they intersected, right? we can actually do the same thing for this one with like the Y2 and the, and the Y1 thing, right? So, so in this case, let's say that we had an expression like this. In the question, they said, okay, what is three to the power of five? And that's equal to three to the power of two X minus seven, right? And they said, what's X? Now this one would be really easy, especially because I got the same bases. But I want to show you, um, I want to show you that uh, that 
this will work out as well to, to write it out like this, right? So let's graph this and we'll get the same, and we should get the same answer. So bring up my graph. There, that worked. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna graph the left side as like, you know, Y1 or F of X1, whatever it is, whatever your calculator uses. And we'll graph this side as Y2. So they're their own functions. We have two functions. I'm gonna figure out where they cross. So the first one here is just gonna be, you can, on, on this, if you guys use this Desmos, you can write it as Y is equal to, or I could have just written three to the power of five, so either one. So three to the power of five. All right, so it's telling me right here that it's equal, that this is a line at 243. But I can't see that big, right? Like I've, I only see up to like 15 here. So what I got to do is I got to change my graph settings. So in this one, they're, they're over here, right? And it's down in this place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my Y has to be less than one to like something bigger than 243. So I'll make it 300, right? So I should be able to see it now. And there it is, right? There's my line going straight across there. Now, if you were using like your TI Inspire or TI83 uh, TI or something, then that's in your, your menu settings, right? So that's in your window settings and that's where you'd change that Y value to be, your Y max to be like 300 or something there, okay? All right, so there's our first one. Second one is gonna be three to the power of two X minus seven. And there you go, I was already up at a good window size. And the good thing about this, this calculator too, this Desmos one, it tells you right where, like you just have to hover over. It's actually kind of nice. But anyway, so, so that's it. So there, that is what my, my X value would have to be there, right? So my X value in this case would be X is equal to, and remember this is my X, right? So that's the X value there. The Y value is 243. So it's just gonna be 2.513. So it, it might be worth going over, you know, how come I got a decimal, right? Well, if you solved this, right, I can make, I can make the, the exponents equal to each other. I could say five is equal to two X minus seven. And then I could solve that. So that'd be plus seven. Oh, this is the one we just solved. This is the one we just solved. Didn't I do this one? You guys are probably laughing at me right now. Anyway, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it again. Um, so plus seven, plus seven. So we end up with 12 is equal to two X. No, I don't think we did. What happened? Where did that go wrong, guys? If you guys can see me on the chat, let me know. Did I type something in funny here? Oh, I wrote it wrong here, I see. That was what it was. Knew that seemed funny, all right. So let's go back up to the exponent. So it should have been in the exponent. Oh, minus seven. That's, that's it. Okay. So here, I, I'm going to put it in brackets in the top. That's the problem there. Minus seven. There we go. And it's six, right? Just like the algebra was showing there. All right. So we found our mistake, or I found my mistake. So X should be six. So if you did the algebra here, just like we're doing here, you go divide by two, divide by two. So we'd end up with, again, six. So X is equal to six. All right. Um, so if it's impossible, so this is pretty much all, all this is saying here is if it, if it is impossible to rewrite these guys as like bases, technically what you'd need to use is something called logarithms. That's actually our next unit. You could use logarithms and that would let you uh, solve it algebraically. But for now, and really you know, math 30-2 skills, we don't need to get too into that. We will just be able to graph both these sides of the equation and then, uh, and then go from there, right? So solve for it and find the X value or the, where they intersect. So I'm going to do one more. I'll do this one and then, and then that's it. And then I won't get you to guys to do this right now. So, all right. So again, let's bring that up. We'll graph these again. All right. So we are gonna graph the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation. So we got 
five to the power of, and then I'm gonna put this in brackets this time so it stays up in the exponent, x plus two. All right, looking good. And then the next one, seven to the power of, and then in brackets, two x minus one. All right, so I got two graphs, right? The last one was a straight line because it was just a number. In the last case, right, like the three to the power of five, that was just a number. So that was a flat, like a horizontal line. These are both exponential functions. So this is what I would expect, that they're both just graphs going up at different rates. Well, I'm just looking where they cross, right? So this one might be a little tricky sometimes. You gotta find where they cross. You can zoom out on this one pretty nice. I can actually even grab the screen and like keep going up. Yeah, this is kind of a, what, is it gonna show me? There, you know what? I am going to make my X less because it's not, so it's gonna be like five. I'll make things a little easier. Or did it already cross? It did, it passed it. It's gotta be down here somewhere. There it is. Okay, so I guess that's where this calculator isn't so good. I'm just kind of playing around with it now. So anyway, um, this is where these guys would cross. So, that, so that's it. So you'd have, it's your X value again here. So just right from there, you can say, well, X would have to be equal to 2.263. Okay. And then, yeah, so verify. So when it says verify, then what we could do, right? You could actually type this in. You could write in five to the power of, and then instead of an X, you'd write 2.263 plus two, and then seven to the power of two, actually I'll need that in brackets, two times 2.263, minus one and those should give you the same answer right like this side would be equal to this side and actually it should be equal to 954.188 right it should be equal to my y value right that that's what we're saying that they would come out to so same thing on this side 954.188 okay all right so that's the idea um all that i have going on below here is that you guys could, um, just to help you out with your exponents, just starting to like, you know, write these things down to figure out what they are. This could be a handy little thing if you, if you know what these are with like a little table. But if you don't wanna do that, I'm fine with it. You can use your calculator to kind of like guess, guess and check on some of these, right? To, to figure out what your bases would have to be. But either way, if you wanna use that, then, then that's great. But other than that, ignore these because we're gonna do our online questions. And uh, that's it. So.